Hi, everyone. Welcome back to a new episode of Gen Ed. Um, We're doing a little bit of a life update at the point where Dan and I are just going to talk a little bit about what's going on in our lives and where are we going to head. And so, Dan, what have you been up to? Where are you in college at this point with like (laughs) midterms recently or what? Yeah, so that's been pretty crazy. I'm just in my freshman year and been hitting midterms a lot. We've got finals coming up in less than a month now. So that's pretty exciting. By exciting, I mean terrifying. Um, so it's going to be a stressful next couple weeks for me, but it's it's going to be good. We're going <laughs> to we're gonna enjoy it. Um, how about you, Alana? What's been going on in your life? Yeah. So I am actually going to get my tonsils taken out sometime. I have a doctor's appointment next week to talk about that. Um, tonsils aren't really that important, so I don't think I'm going to be losing too much. But um, besides that, just the whole college decision process and everything, I got accepted into um, UT Austin and some Christian college, but like tuition for that college was like 50000 And I don't think anyone has that money to, <laughs> Classic. Yeah, to like go and spend. Um, and then there's, well, I live in San Antonio. So the college, University of Texas, San Antonio, I'm just going to call it UTSA because it's shorter. Um, I applied to the scholarship in like December. I was just on a roll of applying to scholarships. I didn't know what I was applying for. I was just going ahead doing like the supplemental questions. And anyway, I got accepted to be a finalist. So I did that and I did an interview um, like this past February. And that whole interview, it's going to have to be a story. So I don't know if we want to talk about like the story of my interview process. <laughs> should I? Or do you? No, okay. we definitely okay. should. I want to dive okay. right into so, it. Um, let's just say it was a very long day. And so I went to, and it was, they had like different segments where you had to like talk to a faculty member and talk to like some other people who were in this like program. And when it came to the time of my interview, it was like the last time of day, it was like 5 p.m. And I was tired and hungry and whatever. And, um, they were like, just asking like, where's your path been? Like, why do you want to major? For me, it was biochemistry. And so I, um, I was talking about like being in the hospital and helping people. And I like really want to help people. And it got to the point where I started to cry. So you can imagine like me um, in like a full on like business professional outfit and just like starting to like cry during this interview and so I'm over here like apologizing like I'm so sorry like (laughs) and so then they continue they ask some like pretty tough questions they ask like what when was the last time you disappointed someone um like (laughs) yeah that was a, a pretty deep question and then um, the next question they asked was, if you could travel anywhere in time, like, where would you go? And I was like, well, are time machines a thing? Like, I would love to, like, and they were like, it's an open-ended question. Like, yeah, we can't help you answer. <laughs> and, so, and so I was like, oh, I would want to, like, uh, go back to, like, my childhood at a certain diner. And then I started to cry again. And... <laughs> And I was like, yeah, me crying, you know, and then I was like, I am so sorry. I am PMSing like in the middle of the interview. I'm like talking about my mental cycle, like saying I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) So you could say I definitely now, um, (laughs) whether that was a good thing or a bad thing, like who knows, but. I, they definitely remembered me because this past week I got an email saying I got the scholarship. So that's awesome. So now I have like a full ride to a school. So it's amazing. Yeah. Um. That That's awesome. <laughs> and yeah, I'm, I'm sure that you sticking out in their minds definitely helped. And I mean, you showed a lot of passion. Yeah. And, and that's what these colleges like to see. They like to see passionate, involved students. 
So I, you killed it. I love it. Yeah, I'm just glad it didn't get to the full point of me like sobbing, <laughs> becoming a, like a therapy appointment. So, so <laughs> don't want to do that. But yeah, so I <laughs> guess next year I'll be heading to UTSA studying biochemistry and with a cool group of people who also got this scholarship. So looking forward to that. Um, I know, Dan, you have some big news. Yeah, were you were you able to meet? Oh, <laughs> oh, I, I was going to ask real quick. Were you able to meet some of the some of the other people that that got the scholarship? Um, I know two other people because um, one of them we used to play soccer when we were little, and we would always play on like the opposite team. So like she was the um, offender, and I was like the <laughs> defender and stuff, you know. And so she actually got the scholarship. So maybe like we'll be roommates. And then it's funny because um, another person from my school was a finalist, and he actually got it. And so he's also on the pre med track. So like it's good knowing some other people. I haven't met um, the other people yet because not everything has been finalized. But looking out for that, I'm glad to have some people I already know. Um, no, yeah, that's that's really fun. It's it's really nice that you've kind of already built up this connection a little bit to the school where you got to meet some of the faculty and you know some of the other kids that will be going for sure. That's that's always nice to have a bit of a connection, you know. Yeah, and hopefully I get like some mentors like who interviewed me, like <laughs> who got to see the true me during that sure. interview. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, Dan, back to you. You have some big news to share. <laughs> I do. Um, for for those who have heard the intro of the episode, I mean, the intro episode to the podcast that we did, um, when, when we first got this going, you would know that I attend BYU in Provo, um, a notoriously private Mormon university. Um, and so you could probably infer from that piece of information that I am in fact, um, a Mormon or a member of the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, um, which is our official title. Um, so I decided in the last few months that I wanted to go, um, be one of the, <laughs> be one of those infamous Mormon missionaries knocking on doors. And so, I applied, you go through an application process, I applied to, to go out on a mission, and I received a call a couple weeks ago to, to Boston, Massachusetts, um, to serve Spanish speaking, so I'll be in the Hispanic communities of Boston, Massachusetts, um, for the next two years, <laughs> so that's a pretty big, it's a bit, that's a pretty big update <laughs> in terms of where I'm going to be. So have you taken any Spanish? In in eighth grade, I took one year of Spanish. Um, I hated it. I couldn't roll my R's. I couldn't pronounce like any of the words correctly. So I switched to German, um, studied German for five years and was kind of expecting to be <laughs> to be called to Europe. Um, so that was a bit of a blind side <laughs> to be sent to um, to Boston. But <laughs> so currently, like if you had to say a sentence in Spanish, could you? I mean, depends on how complex we're talking. <laughs> I, I could say, yo soy Dan. There we go. I am Dan. Okay, yes, um, that would be very helpful. But that's about the extent of my <laughs> Spanish knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, very important stuff. So yeah, they. I'll go through a pretty extensive training where... For the first six weeks of my two-year mission, I will be in Mexico City learning Spanish, oh, wow. um, and then I'll be shipped off to Boston to speak my horrible gringo Spanish. That's so amazing. Um, and hopefully, I'm I'm really hoping that I'll speak Spanish with a Boston accent and just be in like a total abomination of a human. That's my goal. <laughs> oh my god! I. I can't even imagine because, I don't know, living in San Antonio, we have, like, a really high, like, Hispanic percentage. So, like, um, at my school, like, I am a Caucasian female. So, 
in my school, I'm actually like the minority, which is interesting because we have like over half of the students are Hispanic. So I took Spanish for the past four or so years. So I definitely and I get the cultural aspect, like being in such a heavily um, Hispanic populated city like we have a fiesta I don't know what if you know what that is but it's like um battle of flowers so we have like a parade and they celebrate like uh, Mexican Independence Day in September and then Cinco de Mayo and so I really get that <laughs> strong like um like cultural experience and I uh I guess speaking Spanish, I understand a lot more than I can talk. And I guess one thing that really helped me was like telenovelas. So like watching Netflix or just like changing the yeah. language to Spanish and having like the subtitles in Spanish because I'm more visual. And so that really helped me. So you could, I can give you some shows to recommend. Um, what, oh, like, yeah. uh, what is it? Rosa de Guadalupe or I don't know something like that but it's really good it's really funny um so Mexico City any like <laughs> sites you're gonna see there do you know so yeah I I actually don't know like how much freedom we'll we'll have to to go around in Mexico City so there are these things called MTCs missionary training centers and there are a couple around the world. There's one here in the city that I currently live in, Provo. That's like the main one. And then there's one in Mexico City, which is where a lot of the Spanish-speaking missionaries go to learn. And it's basically a giant compound. And so I'm pretty sure you're basically there for like six weeks, like in this school, basically, like a boarding school for like six weeks. And then you ship out. So I don't really think I'll be... <laughs> able to go see the sites of the city they might take us around i i bet they take us around to some places like go on some field trips or something okay but well i have to i i'm not going to be like biking through the city you know <laughs> well i do you have to buy some like authentic vanilla like it comes in like a bit like a bottle you need oh, to yeah. because um one of my friends visited um last year before the whole pandemic and he got me like this vanilla and it makes baking like 10 times better. It's really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that's ideal. I love to bake. So that's a hot tip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a hot vanilla tip. No. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy to think about. Um, I, I don't know exactly how I feel uh, <laughs> about being one of those, you know, stereotypical Mormon missionaries, but it's going to be good. <laughs> so have you ever been to Boston? I have not. I lived in, I lived on the East Coast for a couple years, and I've been to basically every major city on the East Coast except for Boston. Um, my dad, interestingly enough, also served his mission in Boston, Massachusetts, though he was English speaking. Um, so we do have a bit of like a family connection in that way. Um, and by the way, that's like astronomical odds. Like there are, there are over 400 Mormon missions in the world. And me and my dad happened to serve in the same one, which is pretty crazy. But yeah, so we have a bit of a family connection. My dad has had, you know, lived out there obviously for two years and then has gone back several times, but I've, I've never been. So I'm pretty excited to go, you know. Just experience Boston. Go to Boston in the fall. Famous stuff. Yeah, make sure to invest in like some good um, sneakers, like walking shoes, because the cobblestones will like kill oh, yeah. your feet. <laughs> yeah, pretty brutal. And it's going to be pretty chilly, which yeah. is <laughs> unfortunate. And you could also meet up with like some of the other wave um, people, because some, like, some of them are at oh, Harvard. Yeah. No, yeah, for sure. Actually, the person who, who introduced me to WAVE um, is a Harvard student who is living here in Provo because of the pandemic. He's from Utah. Um, and so he'll, he'll be out there. He is also LDS, um, Mormon. And so I'll probably see him around. That'll be fun. Um, plus, I've got, I've got some friends from, from here in Utah who also went to Harvard and other universities in Boston. So 
it'll be fun to kind of <laughs> cross paths with them. But yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. But that that does mean for those very loyal podcast listeners that I will in fact be leaving in the middle of the su- of the middle of the summer and will be replaced by somebody more qualified than myself. <laughs> no, <So. laughs> no, I'm gonna miss Dan so much. I'm so upset that he's leaving. It's awful. It's like not like a breakup. Well, kind of like a breakup, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah. Um, so we'll definitely be missing Dan and we'll see where this podcast goes after. Um, hopefully he still listens once in a while in his free time up in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Listen in. Um, for sure. Maybe, who knows? Maybe I'll make a guest appearance and try to convert everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Part of your mission. <laughs> part of your mission. <laughs> uh, and you'll and you'll be recording at UT Austin. No, not um, UT Austin. Still, yeah. UTSA or yeah, S- San Antonio. Antonio. I don't know. I don't know what here. I was thinking. I've lost my <laughs> mind already. Um, yeah. What What are you most excited about about going to college and going to um, UTSA? Well, besides just like leaving home, I know that's like pretty stereotypical. Everyone just like wants to get out of their home. Um, I guess a perk to already going to school in the city you live in is knowing where everything is. So I'm comfortable getting around and already having connections. And I think that'll help like with networking and then hospitals. But besides that, I'm not really like excited for freedom. I know. (laughs) Um, (laughs) What else? Uh, making my own schedule, not having to go from classes from like eight in the morning to 4 p.m., um, get to uh, coordinate my time better. And I really like that freedom when it comes to my schedule. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Um, yeah. And studying and learning about subjects I'm like really interested in. So especially like the sciences, except for physics. Um you know, I have a issue against physics. So. <laughs> wow. Just doing me yeah. like that. <laughs> so is there anything you're going to miss from Utah? Like when you go to your mission? Man. Um, I, I love the mountains. I'm, I'm a mountain boy. I love to mountain bike and to rock climb. And, and obviously Boston is not very mountainous. Plus <laughs> those activities aren't, really smiled upon for missionaries to be doing anyways. <laughs> so um, I'll definitely be missing the mountains. Um, and, you know, just, just missing the family, you know, they'll all be back here and I'll be back East. So yeah, but, but Hey, I'm, I'm excited for, to get some decent seafood for once mm-hmm. in my life. Yeah. You know, that'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. I, there, there are advantages to both types of geography. See, I cannot eat fish. Like the seafood, like just like I can't. Like I can when I eat it, I can like picture the fishes like swimming around. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. <laughs> you just can't do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm so jealous that you live in like the mountains. I remember you showed me just like a picture once, or on like Facetime or something, and it's so beautiful, like Texas. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's not too pretty, um, but I'm a little bit biased coming from New Jersey and like the Poconos surrounded by so much trees and green. But yeah, it's pretty flat. And that that's what killed me coming from from Michigan to Utah was just the greenery change. You know, Utah's a desert. And so just showing up here and having no like trees, it just killed me. I, I couldn't handle it. Did you have the same thing moving? To yeah, it was it was a huge culture shock when I was um I was about like eight when I moved here, I think. And so I was super excited. I was like, yes, Texas, like super excited. Except um I remember watching the history channel, like, you know, um like not conspiracy theories, but yeah. like the shows about like aliens and like all those weird um and yeah. there was one about like chupacabras or something. <laughs> 
like this weird like coyote type animal <laughs> and I was like terrified I was like oh my god they're in Texas like I'm terrified of going like um and then I showed up and I've never <laughs> seen one um so um wow you're lucky yeah it was and I they're everywhere <laughs> yeah, they're gonna come and get me at night and, like oh um but going from like northeast where there's the saying like oh the northern or like the farther up you go the colder the people are you know uh, <laughs> yeah and so I was always used to um you know like going into store and someone like saying like welcome or like hello and you just keep walking like you ignore them and then coming here it's like if you do that it's considered rude so I had to like be used to like talking to more people and being nice I guess it's a weird thing to say <laughs> and everyone is like really welcoming here and the food's definitely different um so there's a lot more diversity um here in San Antonio the food like Mexican food I really like grew love to like love me some enchiladas and everything super good so that was definitely a big change for me just the like hospitality hospitality and like the way people act but also being away from my family so now I still visit um the northeast every so every year in the summer I go for a week so I'm going there like this June Mm -hmm. yeah nice nice so what I'm curious what is what is there to do in San Antonio that you're super excited for like what what is Alana going to be doing on her weekends in college? They okay. I love ice skating, and here they don't have too much ice skating, so I really miss it. Um, mm. So there's a new ice skating rink downtown, like by the Riverwalk. It's like this um, man-made um, kind of like a lazy river, but they have like um, boats, and so they do like river tours. Um, I don't know if you've seen a movie with. Um, mm what's her name j-lo yeah j-lo and there was like this iconic scene where they like yeah yeah, yeah, and so that that's in san antonio um so i'm looking forward to being able to like go ice skating on the weekends i'm not too much into partying and stuff i like going to bed at my normal 10 10 (laughs) p.m you know um (laughs) <laughs> 10 a.m holy cow <laughs> 10 p.m i go to bed at 10 p.m um yeah um what else there's also like six flags and then there's sea world but i feel bad for the animals so <laughs> um yeah and there's like the typical malls and i love hiking so there's lots of good parks except for the heat like in the summer it's so hot outside it's like over 100 degrees i do not i'm not looking forward to it it's already like getting warmer and i'm kind of against it i wish it was still winter when it's 60 degrees you know that's our winter it doesn't ever snow except this year we did have like a really good uh we had a yeah yeah, we had a week um we were lucky to have like power and water and everything but yeah, we got snow and it lasted. It actually stayed on the ground and it stayed there for a few days. So that's the excitement. <laughs> Heck, that's crazy. Here in Utah, we you know we normally get a decent amount of snow since we're just at such high elevation. But this year we didn't get much that stuck. We have snow in the mountains, but that's about it. Um, so it's crazy that you guys <laughs> you guys got all of our snow this year. Yeah. Well, if you ever come to San Antonio, I could definitely show you around or give you some pointers and you can practice your Spanish that <laughs> practice your Spanish exactly. and get some good food. I'll, here, Here's what we're going to do. In two and a half years, <laughs> I'll come down from Utah down to, down to San Antonio. We'll party. We'll, we'll let Dan show off his, you know, newly found Spanish skills. Um, and we'll just have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to say something now I forgot. Oh, I want to. And then I can go and visit Utah because I always want to see the mountains. And I'll go skiing and stuff because I've never been skiing. Yeah, we'll go ski. Snowboard. 
I, I'm not too big of a skier, but it is fun. Fun fact, my, my mom grew up in northern Utah, about 15 minutes from Park City, which is like a very famous ski resort. Like the Winter Olympics were held there. It's like super famous. She never skied until she was like 20 or 21 when she like was starting to date my dad. And she, she grew up like 15 minutes away from this world-class ski resort. Never went cool. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel sometimes. It's like I'm living right next to these mountains, but never use them. But <laughs> Yeah, I can relate to that. Like there's these, um, like the Alamo. I never went to the Alamo in San Antonio for like the longest time. Like I never really did the touristy things. Like, <laughs> yeah, like when you've lived there, it's kind of different. <laughs> It, yeah, it's you just it's like yeah, it's there, you know. It's nothing special. So when you're in Boston, what are you looking forward to doing? Are you gonna like take a train to like New York City or what? So again, rules are <laughs> rules are pretty strict. Yeah. Um, so I I have an area that that I'm assigned to that takes up like half of Massachusetts and then like all of Connecticut and Rhode Island basically. And so I will be in that area. And within that, that area of, of territory is split into smaller areas. And I will be assigned to one of those areas for a certain amount of time. And then I'll be moved around, you know, like a soldier. So do you get like <laughs> um, vacation time? Like, do you get a week off or something? Nope. Oh. So like, yeah, it's pretty nuts. I sometimes people don't really realize kind of how <laughs> how crazy Mormon mission Mormon missions are. You you go for two years, you are assigned to areas, you are assigned companions, people to work with, and you work like six days a week being a missionary. And then you have you have something called a P day. I think it stands for preparation or something, a preparation day. That's basically like your day off that you can I don't know, go do whatever you want. And by whatever you want, I mean like within mission rules. <laughs> um, it's pretty strict. Um, it It's a pretty strict lifestyle. But, and then, yeah, you, you just go for two years. And I mean, you can, you can leave whenever you want. It's not like you sign a contract and you're like forced to stay there. You can leave whenever. Um, but, you know, you, you commit to two years and most people go for two years you know mm. so pretty crazy and then you get to ride around on your I'm, bikes i'm looking for <laughs> yep and in our white shirts and ties and generally annoy people that's the dream <laughs> i I'm, I'm looking forward to being on the college campuses and just like talking to kids not you know not necessarily like knocking doors and handing out, you know, scriptures to people, but just like being on campus and talking to college kids who are, you know, studying philosophy and studying theology and studying history, you know, all, all areas that I'm very interested in and just being able to talk to them um, about kind of unique LDS theology and, and how we fit into everything and not necessarily like, you know, obviously the, the goal, the, the, the stated goal for the mission would be to try and convert these people, but mainly just to have a discussion with them and, um, and kind of make Mormonism less like mystifying and less weird and less of a, you know, <laughs> weird Broadway play <laughs> and make it more of a real thing. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to just to just talking to people, you know, talking to people with unique perspectives. Yeah, I know someone, um, uh, he's around my grandparents' age. He, um, he had, um, like, some people, like, come knock on his door and, like, t talk to him about the scripture and stuff. And so now it's, like, become a thing where they have, like, weekly just talks. Like, he invites them into his house and they sit down and just talk about yeah. it. And he's like, still goes to, like... Um, a non-denominational Christian church like every single week and he's the nicest guy ever um, oh recently 
No, yeah, that's that's kind of that's kind of what it is. But, yeah, um, yeah. Going off of a little bit of the theology you were saying, I recently watched a documentary on Netflix. I don't know, you probably heard about it. It's like called like Murder Among the Mormons. Um, <laughs> yeah. Did you watch it? Yeah, I watched it. I love it. Yeah, yeah, it was super interesting. I really enjoyed it, but it was also like he was like kind of a little bit of a sociopath. So. <laughs> Yeah, he was totally insane. <laughs> I I I I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. It was actually directed, I don't know if you know this, it was directed by the same guy who made Napoleon Dynamite. Really? Um I did not know that and I love yeah, Napoleon Dynamite. And <laughs> Yeah, he the director, he may not be actively LDS anymore. I know that he like comes from an LDS background. I mean, Napoleon Dynamite was filmed in rural Idaho, <laughs> like the middle of Mormon country. Like, so I I think they did a really good job, like being objective, you know, even though he was from an LDS background, they, you know, they, they showed where the church had, had goofed up and they showed where Mormon culture was not, you know, not great. And so they, they gave a really good accurate portrayal in my opinion of the whole situation plus it was just interesting you know it's just a good good kind of murder yeah i love this murder mysteries and i did learn something like i did learn a little bit more about like the mormon uh religion and culture and also like how how to like forge documents i guess um (laughs) even though i would never do something like that yeah (laughs) (laughs) No, yeah, for, for those listening who haven't seen it, it's it's a short docuseries, like three episodes on Netflix, about a guy named Mark Hoffman, who was a rare documents dealer in like the 80s, who specified, specialized in Mormon documents. And he he was coming up with all of these insane documents and all of these um crazy historical artifacts and then it started coming out that they were they were fake and so he famously um started sending bombs to people's houses and he killed a couple people um and it was this it was this whole massive controversy back in the day it's still talked about in utah and in mormon culture it's like this crazy thing that happened um and so there's this docuseries about it that's really interesting called murder on the mormon among the <laughs> oh gosh murder among the mormons there we go um love that alliteration yeah i would highly recommend it yeah oh yeah <laughs> i can't handle it yeah so our <laughs> life update about college and stuff now led to murder among the mormons so you never know what we'll end up talking hey, about you never know exactly <laughs> no yeah i mean it's it's an exciting period in, in both of our lives. And I think many of our listeners are, are younger, are younger. So it's also a really exciting period in your guys' time, in your guys' lives. You guys are getting college acceptances. You guys are, are making these decisions that are going to impact your life pretty significantly. And, you know, I, I just wanted to emphasize that no matter where you end up or what you end up kind of deciding to do, there's, good everywhere you know you're gonna you're gonna enjoy yourself in um no matter what you what what you decide you're gonna have good come from from whatever you decide to do um and so it's just an exciting time to to build up some experiences and and live life you know while you while you're young yeah and we're actually um later um after we finish this little series, we're actually going to be doing a college series. So if you're still learning how to figure out like how to apply to college or you don't know where you want to go or you don't know like where to find some good scholarships and how to apply for financial aid, we're going to be having some guests on explaining more about that. And so it's really a good chance to listen, especially if um, you're needing to find some support. We're here for you and we'll see you next week.